Hi, so in this set of tutorial questions, what we're going to focus on is questions around lecture two, which was on resistance and DC circuits. So what I've got here is seven questions. I've got one question on power dissipation and resistors, questions two to six on resistors in series and parallel, and then question seven is on resistive potential divider. So question one is based on power dissipation in resistors. If you want to have a look more at this kind of particular topic, just to recap that this lecture was based on this book, so Electronics and Systems Approach by Neil Storey. So this question here is based on this um, circuit here. What we will want you to do is determine the power dissipation in resistor R1 where we know the resistor R1 is 70 ohms and the current passing through this resistor is 2 ohms. So what you might want to do now is pause the video and have a go at the question. So if you recall from the lecture, so equation 8, we determine this following equation where P, well, is used for power. I is denoted, um, current is denoted as I squared and then the resistor is denoted R. In this case, the current is 2. The resistor value is 70 ohms. So when I say 2, I mean 2 amps because it's the current. So 2 squared is going to be 4 times by 70. That's going to give us 280. And recall the units of power are watts. So it's 280 watts of power being dissipated in the resistor R1. So if you move on to question two, so this this question is based, well it's going to be based on resi resistors in series and parallel. And if you look at section 1.10 from chapter one, if you need a recap. So what we've got here is four resistors in series. These is this is quite straightforward to do really when we've got four resistors in series because all we effectively do is sum up the four resistors to get the effective resistance so the effective resistance which is denoted r so in this case i'm not going to write down each of the values of the resistors but it's just 20 plus 40 which is 60 plus 25 which is 85 plus 45 so that's going to give me 130. The units for this is ohms. So they're my equivalent resistance for this circuit for these four resistors in series is 130 ohms. Question three. Now, again, sticking to this topic, what I want to do is determine the equivalent resistance of the following combination. So effectively, we've got here three resistors in parallel. So for this, the equation that we use here, so the equivalent resistor 1 over R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So in this case, it's 100 and what, so it's equal to 1 over 20, 1 over 30 and 1 over 50 and then if we just simplify that so really if we we can probably the base of that 300 so that means that's going to be uh, 300 it's going to be there that's going to be 10 15 on the top 15 10 and then 6, so it's going to be 31 here. So 1 over R is effectively equal to 31 over 300. So we just flip the equations. R over 1, which is effectively just R, is equal to 300 over 31, which is equal to 9.7 ohms. So the equivalent resistance of those three resistors in, in parallel is 9.7 ohms. And a quick check, this value here should be less than any one 
of these three resistors, which it is. So that's just like a sanity check to make sure that you're in the right area. Question four is again, just sticking on this topic, but this question is a little bit more difficult. And effectively what we want to do is the same sort of thing. So determine the equivalent resistance of the following combination. So for this, because what we have is effectively two resistors here in parallel and then two resistors here in series. So what I want to do for this to begin with is first of all, just determine the equivalent resistance of just R2 and R3. Three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this, well, because these are in obviously in parallel, it's 1 over R, and I'm going to call this 2, 3, just for 2 and 3, is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So we'll just work that out, 1 over 10 plus 1 over 40 which is equal to, so 1 over 40, if I can just multiply this one here by 4, to make these both 40, so that then ends up being 4 over 40 plus 1 over 40, which is 5 over 40. Therefore, if we just, again, flip the equations, R2, 3 over 1, which is just R2, 3, is equal to 40 over 5, which you should all know is equal to 8 ohms. Oh, the ohms then symbol went a bit skew with. Um, eight ohms. So that there, the equivalent resistance for our resistor R2 and R3 is eight ohms. So what we need to now do is effectively just do the equivalent resistance for uh, effectively these two here coupled with R1. So it's just going to be R1 plus r2 3 which is just equal to 12 plus 8 which is equal to 20 um, ohms okay and that's your answer there so the equivalent resistance in this circuit is that to be just 20 ohms so if i move in so in this question stick into the same topic on um resistors and series in parallel. However, what you might want to do if you're struggling in this section is look at chapter three, section 3.6 from this book. So in this particular question, what we want to do is determine the voltage V for the given circuit. So what you'll notice is the current passing through each one of these resistors is eight milliamps. And you see here, we've got three different resistor values. What you should have identified is the three resistor values are in series and you're probably already starting to think well voltage resistors in in series sorry if i just said parallel in series um and we've got here the same current so what we can do is use an ohm's law v is equal to i multiplied by r but in this case if we take into account the the rule that we've just learnt for the resistors that are in series, R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, so originally you would have just seen V is equal to IR, but obviously these three resistors now are in series, and we need to just sum them up. So that is equal to, so 8 milliamps is equal to 0 0.008, and then it's going to be multiplied by the sum of these, so 200, plus 300 plus 200 which work that out that's going to be equal to 5.6 volts and that's your answer so the voltage here is effectively equal to 5.6 volts and that's simple so in this question keeping on the topic of resistors in series and parallel what we're now going to look at is a configuration where we've effectively got two resistors in parallel. So we've got a voltage here, 6 volts, R1 300, R2 200. So what I want to do is determine the current for the given circuit. So the formula for this is I, which is your current, is equal to V 
and then multiplied by 1 over r1, 1 over r2, and that's effectively they're going to give us our equivalent resistor resistance for these two resistors in parallel. So our voltage is 6, r1 is 300, r2 is 200. So 6, so 1, so we can probably make, change the base to 300, uh, 600, so that's going to be 2 over 600, 3 over 600, so it's going to end up being um, 5 over 600, multiply that out, so it's going to be 30 over 600 which is 0 0.05, which the current is equal to, we can write it in milliamps, which is 50 milliamps. So the current flowing through that circuit, given those two resistors in parallel, and that voltage is 50 milliamps. In this final question, we're going to look at resistive potential dividers. So for further information, look at chapter 1, section 1.12 in this book. So the question is given here. So to determine the voltage in the following circuit. So what we've got here is a voltage difference, 9 volts. And here we've got 0 volts. Here, this is the voltage we're trying to determine. Where we've got R1 is equal to 100 ohms and R2 is equal to 400 ohms. If you recall from the lecture, or if you've looked at the book, the equation to use to determine this voltage is given by this. So the voltage is equal to V2 plus V1 in brackets, take away V2, and then R2 over R1 plus R2. So this here is equal to, so um, in this case V2, is our zero volts. So there's V2, V1 is our nine, take away zero, R2, which is 400, R1, which is 100, plus 400. So if we work that out, so that's nine multiplied by 400 over 500, 400 over 500, which is effectively just um, 0 0.8 which is equal to 7.2 volts. So here, although the supply voltage is 9 volts, this, the introduction here of this, these two resistors here is causing a voltage drop between the two voltage and we're getting a reading of 7.2 volts. So if you have any final, any kind of questions regarding any of the tutorial questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.